Hey, 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 testing one, two, three, looks like we're live, good. Audio looks like it's on, and uh, gonna take a look at a couple new ones. Well, one older one, a revisit, and one completely new one. So this ought to be uh, pretty fun. Gonna give it a minute here, I think there's some, uh, I came in a little earlier, oh, there we go. So people are coming over. Hopefully the uh, Scotch for Dummies were uh, done with their uh, showing. I had needed to get some things ready, so I wasn't able to watch the end of it. But um, thanks for stopping by. And uh, I'll be taking a look up here at the chat occasionally. And uh, I've got another monitor over here that I look at some uh, older notes and be talking about these two guys. Uh, first off, well, it's a kind of a revisit for me. This is the uh, Holland Park Valkyrie. You're probably familiar with it by now. This was the 2017 release, um, and there's a three in the series. I forgot the names of the next two. Um, one of one of the one, the one for 2018 had uh, a nut in the name. I remember Val value nuts or something like something strange like that. Um, and there's also another release that's going to be in 2019. Well, 2018 is already halfway over, so I guess this uh, second release after the Valkyrie might hit, I'm guessing, here in the next, I would hope, few months at the latest, uh, unless they do it at the very end of the year. Um, sometimes the whiskey releases are December, but, uh, you know, sometimes not. Um, hopefully October is the latest we would see in a new release, but um, you might remember the Dark Origins. That was the guy before this one here. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the differences between the two. I've, I have had the uh, Dark Origins, which is sitting up there. And um, that was a while back, but uh, I do remember a lot of, of similarities and differences between the two. Also, we're going to look at a new, brand new uh, Springbank Local Barley Tin. This is the third release in a series of... Um, some of you uh, Springbank nuts like myself remember the Local Barley 16. That's the first edition. It was bourbon and uh, ex sherry cask, 9,000 bottles on all three releases, I believe. And um, that one went like hotcakes. You can't find it anymore. I would love to have a bottle of that 16. Um, I do know a place, and where I, ironically, I bought the 11, which is the second edition. Uh, the funny thing about that one is it's just straightforward bourbon cask only. There are no sherry casks involved with it. That makes it a bit different. It also uses bare... Uh, Barley, uh, B-E-R-E, um, I think that's how you pronounce it. I might be off there. Um, versus the first one had some like old school local stuff that's a Campbelltown. Then the next one, they went to another farm um, and got the bear barley. This guy goes back to the bourbon and sherry casks, thankfully. So I'm kind of glad they messed up in a little way. I am still going to get myself a, a, an 11 just to have it, but uh, to see the differences. But this one is um, from Westback Farm and uses local barley and specifically um, Belgravia, which is really strange sounding to me. I don't know if it has anything to do with Belgrade. I, I don't think so because it's supposed to be, um, I think, local to the uh, to the island. So if you know any more details about the uh, about the uh, the differences of the barley that they use uh, and why, uh, the only thing I could find out doing some some research on the Belgravia is the, uh, it's uh, very disease resistant. It uh, does really well with temperature changes. It's, uh, I guess it's really, you know, strong and um, easy to use for their distillation purposes. So um, interesting though, I didn't know there, there was that big of a difference. I thought it was the same formula. One was 16, one was 11, and one was 10 years. And when I got to looking at all the nuances, they're completely different. Uh, this one is 70% bourbon cask, 30% sherry cask. Always 9,000 bottles, but um, this is only four miles away from Springbank Distillery is where they actually uh, got the barley from for this guy specifically. Uh, it says it's third of five annual releases, so I'm assuming that means they're going to have two more after this. I'm not sure why they would go ahead and announce there's only going to be five, but maybe they only have so much barley to... Uh, to go with. Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, I did finally get my hands on it. Um, it is expensive, unfortunately. Uh, this one, 
Um, the newest one is 180. The 11 you can still get uh, for 190. Um, the one six, uh, the the um, the 16, I have seen it as high as 350 to 400, and that was a bit ago when I was looking for it. I haven't looked for it for a while because that's kind of out of my price range for uh, uh, something like that, unless it's like a special holiday or something. Um, so maybe maybe down the road, but to have a local barley, you know this. I think this will, will keep me occupied for a while. It's just gonna, it's got that really nice yellow hued box up there. It goes well with the blue and the green and the red and all the other colors that they do. So I'm well on my way to, to, to expanding the collection. And uh, A Whiskey Throttle, how much is the 19? Uh, assuming you're talking about the Springbank 19, that's the Portwood. That one was about two. Oh, it's been a while, but I think it was like about 280, somewhere around there, 290 to 280-ish. Um, and I'm trying to think of, uh, that's the oldest one I've got, is the 19 so far. Uh, I would love to have the 21, but I think that's a $500 bottle, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you bought it for about 200 Wow, man, that's crazy. Yeah, you could probably double the price, but... It's all about the taste, man. Will you ever taste that again in your life? Probably not. I would love to have the experience to say, keep the bottle. That's why I keep empty sometimes. You know, I'll keep the empties. The, yeah, yeah, I, I had that. It was fantastic, too. <laughs> I wish I had four of them, but, you know. Um, yeah, if you can afford it, I always buy two. But uh, it's hard enough to get one sometimes. So, anyway, let's go to uh, back to the Valkyrie. Um, I've had this before. I've had this before after the Dark Origins. Now, the Dark Origins, um, I'll be honest, at first, it was a little too sherry forward for me. I thought it was even more sherry forward than that, than that Abelow or Abana, which sounds insane because the ABV and the Abelow or Abana's think is about, oh, God, I'm going by memory here, but it's in the 60s. Um, the Dark Origins, I don't believe, was that high. Let me see if I can pull it up real fast, just so I'm not uh, losing my mind here. I want to say it was still in the, like, maybe 48. That's my my guess from memory. Uh, I could be off, though, and I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. So let's look it up on Distiller. They got a good database for all that. Uh, 46.8. So not high on the ABV. Um, but that real rough on the sherry. I, I thought the, 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 the chocolate notes were there. Um, kind of dark cocoa, bitter chocolate, though. Um, didn't get as much of the ruby red fruits as I wanted. It seemed kind of like it was fighting with itself. It was a bit maybe imbalanced, and maybe that's why they discontinued it. Maybe it didn't sell as well as they hoped for. I don't know. Now, when I first went to the Valkyrie, I'll be honest again, I wasn't like blown away like, wow, this is, you know, much better. Um, it, to me, it was tamer in, in a good way as far as the sherry wasn't as intense. But um, for some reason, the first time I tried it, I, I didn't get a lot of the flavor I wanted. And it was a, a nice uh, a sample I actually got from a friend. And um, But sometimes if you don't have the bottle to – get like some really good fresh juice out of it. I mean, sometimes whiskey is good if it's fresh out of the bottle, pal. Sometimes it's better if it oxidizes for a while and you've had it for a few months and it's it's aired out and it's, it's you know, and age has a factor in that and all sorts of, of temperature changes and all that. But um, to really explore whiskey in a really good way, you really have to have a, you know, it oxidized and in a more of a pure, you know, form out of the gate. Likewise, when you talk to people about if you add water or not, a couple of drops, I don't think hurt. Some people are like, that's blasphemy. You should never add water. And, you know, it's a back and forth game, but you just try to find a way that you can enjoy it the most. Well, when I reapproached this, I was um, pleasantly surprised that, that I do like it a little more. And I'm not sure if it's because it was less oxidized than the one I had before. The flavor is better. And it might be also because 
I started out of the gate in Isla. I was really heavily into the peats with some sherry on the side, like an Ugadol is more peat than sherry. It's, you know, a good balance, but the peat's definitely strong with it. Same with the Lago Volan Distillers Edition. I can go on and on. Um, so I think when I went to this, since the peat wasn't in my face as much, I was kind of taken back by it. Like, is it as good, you know, as a, does it stand with something like a Nougadal or a, a Lago Volan Distillers Edition or um, any, you know, sherried whiskey that's got slight peat to it? Now that I'm reapproaching it, I think I have a better respect for what it really is, especially for the price point. And that's another thing that I remember. This is more of a seventy to eighty dollar bottle. So uh, Ugadol's, you know, you can get it for a similar price, maybe ten dollars more. Lago Lone Distillers Edition is one twenty easy. Most places one ten to one twenty. I have seen it as high as one forty before. It's not as strong in those maybe as I want, but it is, it, the sherry is definitely there. I do get the big red ruby fruit, strawberries and raspberries and like almost like plums. And I mean, it, it gets pretty deep, not a port, but you know, and you get some spices in there from the nose, which you're d definitely going to get in the palate as well. And you get a slight peat smoke. It's not it's not anything like an Isla peat smoke, of course, because we're talking about Orkney here, but um not unpleasant. I wish it had an age statement, you know, and I know we can just debate that for eons, but it would be nice to know what is really in it. I do like the fact it's 45.9%. That's you know, that's close to 46 enough for me to be pretty happy. Um is it color? Probably a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here, though. Uh, let me see if there's any information on the details of that guy. I don't think they're going to specify, unfortunately, uh, or the chill filtering for that matter. But, um, but it is all about the taste. Like, I know people were on the Scotch for Dummies so – chat they were going back and forth about how they didn't like didn't respect Dalmore for the coloring and the chill filtering and whatnot um and i can understand yeah i mean i i do like my whiskey to be more pure natural you know give it to me like you make made it you know basically let me mess with it let me add the water if i want bad water let me add something to it if i think it needs something don't mess with it out of the gate but um but it is about the taste i mean it really is i mean you, you might not Dalmore left and right but the 18 is a solid whiskey i mean taste wise uh, i even like it better than the king alexander um is it as good as um a lafroig 18 no not my opinion but that's the taste you know that's my preference but is it a is it a good 18 year whiskey i think it tastes damn good i mean i got like it's very complex i got a hell of a lot of notes out of it and if it you know if i can spend and it's a little pricey. I'll, I'll we'll give you that. I wish it was closer to 140, 150. Um, it is pricey for what it is. But if, if I can get an hour or whatever enjoyment out of a, a good dram, sipping it and and not even have to add water to it. I don't even think I added any water to the, eight, the Delmore 18 and enjoy it. You know, then it's it serves its purpose. You know. I wish it was a little less money. That's that's the only thing I think I'm going to knock that particular one for. Um, I won't get into the 12 or 15. I, I probably agree with you guys on a lot of things on that and that stuff, but um, uh, they're not all bad, you know. Every, every distillery, uh, with the exception of maybe a couple, have at least some sort of saving dram that makes them not atrocious <laughs> i would think i can i can I've, I've i've had almost 200 different ones in, in a lot of different distilleries and there's only a couple that i'm like wow i'm not sure if i want to go back to that distillery and even give it a chance but um thankfully most of them have a decent a decent tram yeah that's what i'm thinking sam uh, thanks for stopping by by the way 
Yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, I wanted to to get you guys something that's a little more obtainable, e- easier to get, something that is is nice that I think you'd appreciate. Um, you know, there are a couple other ones that I do like a little better, but you know, it is what it is. I talked about that, and then this guy is going to be definitely the, I think the, the bell of the ball. <laughs> It's nice to find, I mean, most of the time, I don't want just all peat. And most of the time, I just don't want all sherry. Usually, I want a little mixture of both that's balanced well. And that's when I think that the Valkyrie is a good choice for its price. (laughs) I'm okay, uh, uh, Malted. I just... I just wanted to, I just wanted to let you know people know that yes, there are issues with maybe the brand as far as some things go, but there is at least one dram that's going to be you know same thing with McAllen. I mean, I'm not a big McAllen huge huge fan, but there are a couple of drams I've had that are damn good. Are they overpriced? Probably yes, but are they good? That's what the main you know. The main question I think is, is it good or not? Um, and there are a couple of McKellens that are actually not bad. I wasn't a huge fan of the basic 12 and I've had like a triple cast 15. It was okay. But like the rare cast black, I mean, it's a hell of a lot of money, but it's, it's awesome. Um, the final 21 hell of a lot of money, but it is awesome. It's kind of like, you know, one of those, balancing acts with that I and mean, Highland Park's kind of I mean they don't suffer from as much coloring thank God but they do su- suffer a lot of press for their um, chill filtering I think and their uh, on a statements recently and uh, but this one I think it's worth you know a chance I haven't had the full volume in it that's on my radar to try I know Rob's a big fan of it whiskey in the six um, I might not be as a, a big of a fan because I know it's straight up bourbon barrels pretty much. And um, I did like the, the, the spring bank uh, 14 bourbon wood, which is straight up bourbon as well. That's what it's, I'm going to measure up that uh, full volume too. And I don't know if it could hang with the spring bank uh, 14 bourbon wood. Probably not, but we'll have to see. Oh, HP doesn't color. Okay. Well, there you go. If they don't color, then that's that's good. This is this is must be a little older than I expected. Maybe it's the sherry, possibly. Yeah, it's got to be the sherry. It's a little darker than I expected, but uh, I'm glad that they don't because uh, that would be uh, that would be uh, a bad deal. Xenophobic artist. <laughs> oh man, you guys are something else. John Belushi's got a few uh, Tomat and 15 cast drinks. Ooh, the money. Yeah. Glenjoin Nakir is like 65 bucks, man. I wish it was 50 bucks. That'd be nice. Our, our prices are are high for Glenjoin Nakir. I think it's because everyone loves it. Uh, Old Polly doesn't sell well in Maryland, but I tell you what, Glenjoin sells like water here. It's crazy. Mmm. What kind of mix-up was it, Connor, on the uh, the bourbon? Um, not getting that. Uh, the good news is, I think they. I know they did another run. I didn't get the first run. I got the second run of it. Um, yeah, thirteen green is another one that's that's really good. It's a totally different whiskey, though. You got to be in the mood for that organic barley, that green veggie kind of. Thankfully, it's not like overbearing, but it's got some notes of a little bit of green vegetal here and there and mint and basil and a little bit of, um, um, you know, that with the typical spring bank funk from the dunnage and, and all that. So getting a new 15 next week. Ooh, I bet that's good. That's one I need to do a review on too as well. Uh, malted is the uh, 15. The, uh, the 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 nose on this is great, like I was saying. Um, this Valkyrie, the palette is good, but the finish is where I get a little miffed. Uh, I'm not getting the finish I want, and I'm pretty picky on my finishes. 
the, the more I, I like scotch, the more I get into it, the, the more I want it to linger. I want it to linger for, you know, 15, 20 minutes if I can get it. Uh, I mean, a Lagavulin 16 is less than 100 bucks, and it, the finish can last three or four hours if you, you know, are going to be awake that long. Uh, I wish this had that. That's the only thing I'm, I'm really kind of dinging it on, really. It's got a great palette, though. It's got the, the black currants. It's got a little bit of that, that mocha espresso uh, note on the back end. It's got a little peat smoke there, more of that matchstick kind of um, smoke, I'd say. Um, it's really nice, but I want that finish to go, and it's so dry because I think of the type of sherry they're using. I don't know if it's Fino, what they're using for their sherry in the Valkyrie, but I'm thinking that that might be why it's drying up on me. And I, I, it's a shame because even if, it, if, if I'm not totally dry, I'm still not getting any more fruit flavor or chocolate or even an espresso. I, I want something. Hell, I'll even take a marshmallow at this point, but I'm not getting any of that. So, hmm. It's good though. I mean, you know, for 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 if I'm in the mood for Pete, little Pete, little but but a little more sherry than Pete. Uh, even though the balance on this, I think, is um, uh, well. No, this one is not this. I was thinking of the seventy thirty, but that's this guy. This one's probably a little more even. And it definitely tastes that way. It's it's it's, it's definitely solid. I think I'd give it like a. I think before I gave it like a, a three out of five. Pretty much, might bump it up to like a 3.25 at this point. Uh, not not huge, huge because I want more of the finish. I think a couple of drops might, you know. Let's see. Oh, we might as well give it. It's it's just do here, just just to make sure that uh, we're just call, talking a couple of drops, nothing much. Um, See if that makes any difference. Uh, typically, on a finish, you're not going to get a whole lot on a couple of drops of water. Uh, you're actually probably going to team it down and maybe get some different notes out of it, but it's worth a shot. You never know. Maybe the fruit will come out a little bit more with a couple of drops. Uh, like I said earlier, the, the next two are the uh, the Valknut, which is expected in 2018, and the Valhalla to arrive in 2019. Uh, the Valhalla it sounds like a good name. The, the Valknut, uh, that's a little different. Never heard of a Valknut before. Or Valnut, maybe it's pronounced. Valnut? Because the K might be silent. I don't know. That's a, I don't speak any of the, uh, I don't speak any of the uh, Norse uh, languages. So, <laughs> Have you tried that local barley yet? No, I have not. This will be my first one that I've ever... Um, I've ever tried. I've been letting it sit out for a while. As you can see, it's in the glass back here. The ten-year-old. I am. I think I am for. I am for a tree. I've never heard of anyone that's not liked it. I hope I'm not the only. You know, the first one on a live uh, camera to be like, oh God, I don't like it. But I, I've never had a spring bank I don't like. Uh, this, the green thirteen. I, ha I had it growing me a little bit at first. I wasn't so sure. But the more I had, the more I got into it. I think it did help with oxidation, and it did help with some water. I wasn't too keen right out of the box with nothing and right out of the bottle, you know, fresh. I think it needed some air, and I think it needed a little bit, a couple of drops of water. And I was I was all in there after that. The cook Karen is still reasonably priced now. Yeah, it is. Uh, I've got to get myself the 12. That's the only bottle I don't have back here. I've got everything but the standard 12. They do have it at my favorite place, so i got to pick one up before long. Um, which one here? You'll enjoy, I hope. I did. It tastes young and bright, but very enjoyable. Is it, it, Did it have um, – I know you're not a big peat head, uh, everyone, did, but it's supposed to be peated. Did you get a lot of peat off of it or – the ten local way overpriced. Um, I, it, I mean that's the thing. 
Swami, it depends on how you look. I mean, it's a 50, this is a cast strength, you know, basically, it might as well be cast strength, 57.3. There's only 9,000 bottles uh, of this run, it's third edition. It is 70% bourbon, 30% sherry. There is a lot of work that's done with it. Um, it's that that specific Belgravia barley that's grown at West, you know, Bank uh, Back Farm. That's, you know, there at the distillery. I mean, there's a lot of work and that goes into it. I think it might be worth. I mean, it's 180. It's not like you know, if it was 280, I would agree with you. 180 age statement, non chill filtered, not colored. No, no bullshit. It's 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 here. It's there. It's beautiful. It doesn't need any frills. Pow. I mean, I, I think you could spend a lot of work on 180 on a lot of worse things. If I tell you that. <laughs> um, John, I never had the 21. I can just tell you the 25 is excellent, though. I do like the 25, especially for the price. Um. Malta, Malta bought the 11 for 180, and it wasn't worth it. But the 11 is is totally different than this. The 11 is just straightforward bourbon. There's no sherry in it. It's the uh, the second release. It's a completely different whiskey. So I mean, I, I think I will like this one better because it's got the 30% sherry uh, that's in it. I do know that the 11, which is the one right before this, because I ordered 11, they gave me the 10. I was at first I was kind of pissed. But I figured out that it's a totally different bottle, and uh, this one actually supposedly does pretty well. Uh, the 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 one the eleven actually they wanted one ninety for. They wanted ten dollars more for it. Um, so we'll see. Everyone everyone thinks this is funny. Thinks it's worth it. <laughs> one twenty. Damn, that's cheap, man. Because it's. Uh, I mean, that's. It's definitely worth 120, no doubt. I would think I haven't even touched it yet, and I still already think it's worth 120. As many people have loved it, I'll say that. Anyway, let's move on. We'll save this one for um, afterward. Let's have ourselves a little chip, unsalted, you know, just a good palate cleanser. Sorry to eat in front of you guys, but it's got to be done. I hear you, Swami. It's kind of um, it's a it's a tough one. I mean, it's a lot of money. I, I won't I won't disagree with you there. That's for you know anything above a hundred dollars to me is a lot of money. So I'm stingy too, my friend. <laughs> Sorry, I mean to spit chips at you, but um, made me laugh when I saw that. Oh my. Yeah, building up the shrine. Hopefully, I'll get a few more bottles to go up there uh, before long. I'm going to have to make some adjustments. I've been debating on if I want to still collect any Bowmore. The 18 was okay. It just wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. Um, the 15 Darkest, at, when I first had it, I liked it a lot. The second time, to me, it was a little it was a little more flat. It wasn't as, as thick or oily as I wanted it to be. Uh, the only one out of the four that I really liked was the Doris Moore, the, um, the also known as the Tempest uh, Six. That's the Doris Moore Three. Um, pricey as hell, it's like one seventy, I think, for that bottle. And um, you know, it's kind of. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, Belmont's got a lot of, of of options. I'm not sure if I want to get you know into all their because once I get into a distillery, I want to get everything they have. You know, Bunnahaven, I'm going to stick with. I like Bunnahaven a lot. Springbank, I'm going to stick with. I love them. Lafroyd, same way. Ardbeg, same way. Uh, Kalila threw me off in the 17 unpeated. I think I'm going to stay away from unpeated Kalilas. It's not really my cup of tea. Kilholman is the is the you know what? <laughs> it's it's. I'll I'll definitely be getting the Sauternes cask. Uh, it is on my radar. I saw it recently uh, for Kilholm, and I'm going to be snagging that. And also a bunch of different things I've seen. Um, there's so many things from Kilholm I want to get. So that's going to be definitely on there. Holland Park. I'll probably stick with. Um, 
they were like one of my first ones I kind of got into. Kill Karen, I'll definitely be collecting those. I think I'm going to stick with those, maybe throw in Glen Scotia. Uh, start a little collection on those guys. But uh, I think I'm going to stick to my favorite brands. Because if I, if I go way far out and start collecting everything from, um, you know, Tomaten or Ben Reich or, or I'll stick with Talisker. I do like Talisker. I might collect some more of those, but like Ball Blair and Glenn Kinchy and all that. I'll, I won't have any, you know, any space. <laughs> I don't have any room left. Anthony Wells and I are pen pals. <laughs> well, you need to hook a brother up there, Swami. Tell him he needs to meet somebody in, in America who's a huge fan, just as much of a fan as you are in Canada, and I will do anything they want, <laughs> with the exception of giving them, you know, false reviews. But I will I will review anything they want to throw at me. I've got four nice ones up here already, and I want to add to the collection. So, um, triple cap. We tend to get our big early. Don't know why they say I wonder. Oh, I guess we're talking about getting um, getting the grooves a bit. Yeah, that's a tough one. I think the new one comes out really soon. It's made uh, June the 2nd, I think it is. I'm not sure when it gets to America, if it's like shipped right away or if it, uh, if, um, you know, if there's any lag, I need to check that out because I do have the committee release uh, groups that don't have the standard. I want to get the standard, so I got to get myself uh, on the ball on that one. Oh, wow. Wow. Totally different than what I thought I would get, and it's the Sherry talking to me. Wow. Some really, really nice soft fruit. I mean, we're talking... Some some like luscious peaches, nectarines, oranges, some tobacco. Am I losing my mind? Oh, really nice tobacco, like um, like Kentucky. Like you're walking in the in the farm and and you can smell it. Not cut yet. Oh man. Maybe some some distant chocolate, like a more of like a fudge. Real deep in there though. Getting a bit of the bourbon now too. Some of the oak wood, I guess it is. Hmm. That is really more complex than I thought it would be, especially for ten year. PA shelf today. Oh, Pennsylvania. Nice. PA is tough because they have um, the um, the state run places you have to get stuff from. Huh. Some really, the fruits are fighting, not fighting, fighting. They're so delicate. They're that that wave of tobacco and barley and malty goodness is like right there, hanging with it. I'm so thirsty. I have to have a little sip. <laughs> Woo, my, hmm. Nice. Wow. That's got sparkles in it. <laughs> That's it's not hot really. I mean, even though it's 50, what is it, 57.3? I mean, you could taste some a, a little bit. It's got it's got this real I don't want to call it lemon. It's it, it it's more complex than lemon. It's some sort of um Sweet tea with um, with lemon together. It's got that bite, man. That's um, uh, that is interesting. It's gonna need a couple drops, but uh, out of the gate, man, I got a mouthful of goodness there. 
let's uh, give this a couple drops. Couple drops. We uh, G, if you ever see this and you give me hell, man, you don't know what you're missing. You gotta put a couple drops sometimes just to get you know the molecules flowing. Uh, let's see if there's any. Um, I don't think anyone's just even reviewed this on the store yet. It has zero notes, so no one's even touched it yet. Hmm. Let me get some some honey and. To get, I'm gonna get more of that palette. Um, I did not see your, your review yet, Swami, on 25. Um, you liked it, you just found it forgettable. Um, the 25 Holland Park, I liked it to me because I thought it was like the 18 if you threw some tropical fruit in there with the 18. Um, are there nuances of the 18 still there that I miss? Most likely. Is it a huge difference as far as uh, the price tag, I think, is like five six hundred dollars to the 25 now versus just 130 I think, for the, uh, the 18. The 18 is a much better buy. I'll agree with you there. Um, it's. I thought it was an interesting taste. Uh, I do like the, the tropical with the 18. Uh, so I did like it maybe a little better, but not – Five hundred, six hundred dollars worth better. If that makes any sense. You paid a hundred dollars for the eighteen. Wow, that's a good price, man. Because usually you can't find it any cheaper than one twenty to one thirty here. Um, any place that I've found, pretty much. How good is the groove? Forty six percent. I don't think anyone's had the regular one yet. I think it comes out June the 2nd there, Ryan. Um, I do have my eye on it. I will be there at uh, when, on the release, um, probably off the truck. But I uh, still have to wait till I uh, see. Uh, they're, they're, um, I think it's actually fit, technically released June the 2nd, but I could be off here. Let me see what the calendar came out today in PA. Oh. Maybe it already is out then. Huh. I thought we had to wait to the second. Well, it's already out in PA. I'm in Maryland. It's just, just a state south of there. So it's probably already out then. Well, the place I go to still has um, Air Verdes and Perpetuum and uh, some older bottling. So I don't think they're going to run out. They got Kelpie all over the place. So they're, they're probably not going to run out of it anytime soon. So I'll probably just wait and get it there. Um, I think they'll sell it for 110. Thankfully, it won't be overpriced. Um, I know some people don't don't go on your high horse yet, guys, uh, on the age statements for Arbeg. But the, usually, the NAS is from Arbeg are at least 10 years old. I will tell you that for a fact. I do know that. Um, so there you go. And that's on the the least amount. They they could put a 10. I'm not sure why they don't call it. It's probably out of confusion. Like if they said our big 10 era Verdes or our big 10 um, Perpetuum or our big 10 Kelpie or whatever it, I think it would be a little redundant. That's probably why they don't do it that way. But uh, they are at least 10 years old. Um, Black art forest is superior to 25. <clears throat> Yeah, so I mean, I think I might agree with you there. I do like the Black Arts 4, I think, a bit better than 25. And you can get the Black Arts 4 here for 300, I think it is, 300, 320 at the most. So um, definitely better for price, too. Damn, yeah, I poured some local barley tin. Still a great nose, even with a couple drops of water. I'm trying to kill my, sorry, I got to clear my nostril a little bit here. Man, lots of big oranges. It's some gumdrops even in there. Nice.
there is some like happy sparkles. I swear to God in this stuff. I don't know what it is. Is it the barley? It's got to be the barley. There's like, it's almost like, it's not like pixie dust because it's not sweet. It's, um, but it's got the same kind of um, texture. It's not powder though. It's like this, like, how do you explain it, Triple Cap? You're tasting it. You should tell me. Um, yeah, I like the conic ones with sugar on them a little bit. I, I mean, I was getting them on the nose. I don't. The, the palate's a bit more refined. It's a little more not sweet. The sweetness comes off the sherry, I think, on the nose. But the palate, I get more definitely barley forward with the little hint is maybe a little sweetness. So. You need to make a run to Maryland if you have any, any dusties on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, it should come by to Maryland sometime, man. Um, always up for uh, sharing a dram and a story. So anybody that's that's ever out this way, let me know near uh, Annapolis, the capital. Severna Park is about eight miles north of there. And uh, I've had uh, Tosh, uh, you might have seen him on the channel before. He actually... Uh, uh, as the beverage guy for a restaurant in DC, really good uh, Indian restaurant. And uh, he stopped by when he brought me a couple samples, let him have a couple samples. And uh, uh, it was really a nice, uh, had a nice time. He stayed for, God, he, he came up from Alexandria. It's a bit of a drive from Virginia, but he stayed for, gosh, four or five hours. And we, uh, we had, we had several drinks. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Ah, oh, man. Early sweet and then some complexity, a tad bitter. Yeah, but thankfully the bitterness is not um, overwhelmingly bitter. It's it's a nice balance. There that that sparkly barley goodness at the beginning. I, I just love that. Hmm. It's so like effervescent and it's almost like a like a cream soda I'm, I'm getting cream soda off of the palate too which is awesome i love cream soda um and i guess the um when the, the barley dries that's where you get the little bit maybe of the bitter but the bitterness to me is very subtle thankfully i don't because i'm turned off by a uh, lot you know funk and all that if it's like overly bitter um I'm not getting as much of the dungeon uh, warehouse deal on this guy. I'm surprised that it's, uh, I mean, quality wise, I'm not surprised that the spring bank is actually really good, better than I expected. Uh, so that is spring bank like, but the, the leatherness, uh, the funk is not there with this for me. I'm not getting it at least. It's only 10 years, so the funk shouldn't be gone. I mean, the, the, the Spring Bank 10, the basic, is funky as hell. So um, I, I don't know what – I think it's just the way that they do this particular barley deal here. It is beautiful, though, man. I can't believe how hot it's supposed to be. It just doesn't taste hot. I could drink this, like, um, pretty easily. It's scarily easily. <laughs> hate to say it but uh, man I don't understand why this is imported into California of all places it blows my mind I don't think these guys uh, tell you where oh New York never mind so Holland Park's imported in New York that makes sense but why does Spring Bay go to California can anybody tell me why I'm just curious of, of what's the deal with that Hmm. Really nice citrus notes coming in too with the lemon, but not pledgy lemon, not artificial. It's really nice and fresh. Man, I really love a spring bank. I, I tell you, I'm so glad I, I took a chance on um, just. It was just word of mouth. It was. It, I don't think it was any review or anything that um, anybody was doing. I just heard from a, uh, I think a local guy that said Spring Bank 10 was worth a, a, a shot. 
and I was in a, I was in a restaurant and uh, luckily this person didn't know what they had. They had it downstairs and they had it unopened and they were like, I guess we're never going to sell it. So we'll just pour it live for this guy. And I was luckily the guy that gave me a, an actual wine glass, a big fat wine glass. And they poured me a wine pour out of it. And I was like, wow, I think I might have a, a double or a triple. And I, and I did. It was so good. I think I had drank half the bottle. Oh man, it was, and, and the food was great too. That was, that was like the best experience. And that was my first spring bake. It was just a 10, but man, that was the best damn tasting scotch I think I've ever had. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're right, Triple. The, it, it's, it's, it's so, and I don't want to use the cliche smooth, but Easy drinking, 57%. I mean, my God. It's like slip, sipping a lemonade, shandied cream soda, and the alcohol is there, but you just cannot taste it. It's 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 amazing. Uh, I, I've already – I can't believe I already drank that much of it, just, just a couple of sips, and um, – Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to last very long, and I think I will have to get the eleven just to just to have a bottle. But man, Zombie's right; it's really freaking expensive, man. It's really damn high. I wish it wasn't. I'll have to. Um... The problem, though, is he is second edition. It's the one before this one. If I don't jump at the chance to get it, I'm not going to be able to get it. Probably just like the damn sixteen. That's what pisses me off. <sighs> First world problems, I tell you. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be a hell of a lot worse. Uh, I'm not religious that much, but thank God that we can just enjoy a dram and, and not have to worry about drinking water and fighting for food and things like that. It's just, thankfully, it's great to be alive. <laughs> Oh, man, if I can sweat whiskey like this, I hope I'll live to be 350 at least. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Swami, it, 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 it's, uh, it's up there, man. This is like a four-point. <sighs> what would I change? Not to give it a five. Five is my highest. 0.25 increments. Why would I not give it a five? That's what I'm fighting with. Because it's got the sherry. It's got a little peat. It's got the barley. It's got the proof. It's got the age. It's not chill filtered. It's not colored. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> it's like, what? What? I guess more age. Maybe if it was the 16, I'd give it a five. 4.75. That made it easy. It's the only thing I can really, you know. I mean, it's 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 refined. It's 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 classy. It's you know, not much I would change at all. The only thing I'm holding out for is that 16 and maybe the uh, that you know. Six years of AG goodness might boost it up even better. And you got to leave room for improvement on some of these uh, lower aged guys. Um, hmm. Serene 11 was the only SP I didn't recommend. Wow. I'm wondering if it's because, hey, uh, Swami, do you think you would have liked it more if it had the sherry, uh, the 30% sherry in it? Because that's the only thing I could think of about the 11 that's different than the 10 and the, the 16 being the second edition that it didn't have the, um, you know, that sherryness that I, I personally love. So maybe that maybe that's what you're feeling that's missing out of it. Uh, someone asked about the finish of the Valkyrie, if it was um, – rubber medicinal i didn't get that I, and sadly i think that's the problem i didn't really get a whole lot of 
finish out of the Valkyrie other than a lot of dried sherry, you know, notes. Uh, I got a mocha espresso note at the end, which you could maybe say is slightly bitter. Um, but, you know, I don't mind the espresso taste. So to me, you know, it's just, you know, I like the SP-11. It's not SP-16, but this is bad in my opinion. Yeah. It's hard to get over that price, though. I agree with Swami, man. When I first saw this and I was like, a 10-year-old for 180 Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, if I'm, same thing with that Doris Moore as a 10-year-old statement, but there is a lot of love they put in that bottle. And that's why, you know, they can charge 170 for it. That's the, that's the, the, the you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, we're so used to putting prices with ages that it makes it hard to spend that much on a lower than 18 year old. You know, I, I think, I think it's where the difficulty comes from. That's just me. I can't speak for Swami, but Hey, Tosh. Good to see you, man. Uh, I was just talking about you, uh, how you were able to stop by uh, a bit earlier. Did you catch up my review of the uh, the liquid? I'm sorry for all the technical problems I had with uh, whiskey uh, throttle trying to get a, a show going. Um, we should have spent more time dialing things up. I, I figured since he's already done it before that it would be easy just to throw up a, a review and, and just talk. But it was a, a bit of a train derailment. <laughs> But we got through it. Um, really appreciated that link with me. That's the best Alexander Murray out of the uh, Glen Lossie and the Glen Keith. That Linkwood was the best, I think, of the three. And um, I wouldn't mind having that again, uh, my own bottle of that. So I'll be on the lookout for that one. The Akintoshin, I wasn't into as much, but... Akintosh is a lowland. It's a very, unless it's got a lot of things going on like the three wood or like some special, I mean, I like the American Oak, but I just, I'm not sure what it was about that, uh, about the, uh, that Akintosh. I, I, it wasn't my favorite, but I do appreciate the, the opportunity to get, get a sample of that. I have not done the uh, Paul John or the, um, the uh, Feather Cairn yet, but that Feather Cairn is going to be special, man. That's going to be huge, big time. HP and Spring Bank. Oh, yeah. Moose, yep. Thanks for stopping by, man. The, um, the three ways sold out locally. Wow. Yeah, no, I hear you on the, uh, based on the many factors. That's why I was trying to think of different reasons of why, you know. Total wine hat by me has the liquid class strength. Ooh, I would pick that up, Ryan. That's a good. That's a good bottle, man. Uh, Paul John in the whisper a lot. Later. Yeah, he, uh, Tosh gave me a sample of Paul John when he was here, and uh, I did like it. Uh, it, was, it was my second uh, in, Indian, I think that is uh, whiskey. I try to stick to Scotch and, and Japanese on the side on occasion. Scotch, my main forte, but. Um, I've had an Emirate rye I really liked a lot. And since he had the Paul John, I thought, well, what the hell? You know, it's worth a try. And I had the Cavalin, uh, the Soulist, um, when I was at the expo, it was really good too. It sadly reminded me of the Hawkintoshan 3 wood, though. It was very molassesy and syrupy and, you know, that kind of thing. But it was still good. I don't know if it was $350 good, but it was good. Um, but um, anyway, but I can't remember. Which uh, it's a classic, yeah, non-peated. Yeah, it's a good taste. I like, I liked it. I like that one. People are buying the right ways the market has been spoken. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one on the market. It's some, uh, unless I'm praying that rum or vodka or something else like gets into the into the fold and does really well and people get off the whole whiskey investment crap. Uh, 
I appreciate people that's trying to make the money back, back maybe from buying a bottle if they spent a really, you know, a good amount on something. But at the same time, I want the prices to come down. And if it means people can't invest in whiskey anymore, then that's fine by me because I'm a drinker. I'm not an investor. I, I don't, you know, if I want to invest something, I'll get a, you know, put money in my 401k plan or I'll um, put money in my daughter's college fund. I'm not going to freaking, you know, um, buy something and just pray that it goes up like baseball cards in the eighties, you know, that didn't, if you still have those today, it's not going to go well. Not rum, please fuck. <laughs> Swami loves his rum. <laughs> oh man. Hmm. Really glad that I, um, uh, Took a gamble on this guy. I mean, not really so much a gamble because I was already a Spring Bank fan, but a gamble in a sense that I never had that type of uh, Spring Bank. And it, it is a bit different, but different in good ways. Very sparkly taste, man. Cream soda, sweet southern lemon tea, just right amount of, of that barley goodness with honey i mean well balanced across the board high bv low alcohol taste oh man i i just cannot really ding it i can't wait to get my hands on the 16 and i will i will find you my precious <laughs> i will find the 16 someday oh man i just hope i don't pay my left kidney for it but um yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to trying the 15, the 18, and the 21 someday as well. Those are also on my spring bank to-do lists. As well as I saw recently a sherry cast, um, it was like a sherry charred cast matured. It was like a 20-year, 19. They wanted like some crazy 250, 280 for it. I was like, man, I don't know about that. But the 19 went for the port cast I have went for something like that. Spring makes are just priced high. That's just the way it is. Like everyone was saying the market is just high on spring bank. I mean, the 10 year is 70 freaking $5 here. It's not cheap for a 10 year by any means. Um, I mean, hell, you can get an art big 10 for freaking 50 bucks, a Lafroy 10 for 50 bucks. Why is the spring bank here 75, $80 for a 10? I don't, I don't get it, but that's a whole other discussion, uh, for a whole other time. Well, thanks so much for stopping by guys. I'm going to have to wrap it up here and, uh, I've got to telework tomorrow. Uh, Victoria Beckham is hot. I always had a crush on Posh Spice when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord um the wheels are coming off now the train's about to, to derail thanks uh, john please give me a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't i could use all the ones uh yeah i agree uh i agree uh swami on the uh <laughs> whiskey orders this is a short independent uh let's see ig review of the spring big green oh yeah 12 okay Cool. I've had the 13. I have not had the 12. I would like to try that because I'm sure it's a bit different because they do different uh, batches. And that's the one before that's the one I before the one I had. The 12 came out a little earlier. So I'd love to get a, a try for that. That would be cool. You're always welcome to uh, stop by again, Tasha, if you're in the area. Let me know. Same with you, everyone. I know sometimes you drop by Severna Park sometimes. And um yeah, I haven't seen a drill. I think my last, uh, if you saw my last episode, Santa with Whiskey Throttle, that was a train derailment, my friend. It was horrible. We, we were we were all sorts of all over the place with the audio. It was a freaking disaster. <laughs> I'm just glad that that people stuck around and you know ended up watching the. Uh, the show, uh, sort of, I don't even know how many people, I, I wouldn't even look at the numbers. I was just kind of like, whatever. I even thought about deleting the video afterward. It was so bad, but I just felt bad. Cause that Ben, ben, ben do is, uh, is a really good bottle. It's really different. Uh, not like any scotch I've ever had. And I wanted to get the word out of, of what it was like as long and along with another one that, uh, reviewed at the same time. I can't remember which one it was now, but, uh, 
those are samples. I don't have those bottles. So uh, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. I hope it's a good gift. I hope it's not a gift that you want to keep returning. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dispute you there, uh, Swami. I, I've I've got one. I've got one. I'm gonna review for you though, and that is. Uh, I'll be sure to make Swami uh, get on the Dalmore 18 uh, review uh, when I do that one uh, later on. I have had it before. It is really good. Um, I just didn't do it justice. It was at an expo when I had it, so I think. Uh, We'll have to take a, another look at that. I've got a lot of uh, other good ones that are on the horizon. we got a Lafroy Bordure that's going to be good, a Lafroy Enclamore we're going to try, you know, the Ardbeg 23. Oh, yes, one of my favorite bottles of all time. We'll do the McKellen Final 21. We'll do uh, that Dalmore 18. And uh, we've got a McKellen uh, Rare Cast, not the black. I've already done the black, but we're going to do the regular Rare Cast at some point. Um, a regular old Glenfiddich Select cast. It's a travel retail exclusive. We'll do, um, let's see, there's a couple other ones back there, but lots to do. So uh, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, I've got some more work to do on the shelf, saying I appreciate the uh, the uh, the comments on it, and I'm going to move to some things around. I think this might be, become my, my Kilhoman shelf on the bottom here and get rid of the the Bomar and the Kalila just because I want to make room for Kilomen. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. It'll, it'll definitely uh, it'll definitely expand. I got some Octomores on here. I got a 6.1. I got that review at some point. And uh, if I ever get my hands on that Lagavulin 18, they just uh, released uh, another Fashil offering. I'll take any Fashil Lagavulin 18. I don't care what year it is. As long as I don't have to pay $500 for it, I'll take it. Please. Find one for me, <laughs> somebody. Uh, that's around two hundred dollars at the most, because the, the the whole prices on these things are just out of control. Well, Slanch Valley, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you as always. And uh, maybe we'll try to do a pop up review. Uh, I try not to step on anybody's toes. I'm not sure if Rob's doing one next Tuesday, um, but maybe if not, might pop something on open on a Tuesday or something. That's the other day that I get a, a chance sometimes to do one. So see you later, guys.